Today, I'm gonna show you how I made these extremely cool, extremely easy custom concrete address plaques. Heck, you could probably bust this project out this weekend and maybe even make some for friends and family. Let's make something cool. Today's project is gonna be super fun and super easy. Now we're actually gonna make two address plaques. Uh, one of them is gonna be very simple. We're basically going to make a melamine box with sides. Then we're gonna trim out the perimeter with some PVC trim to uh, give it some visual interest, some visual appeal. Now the second design we're gonna do, it, it's a little bit more involved, but I, I, I really feel like the juice is gonna be worth the squeeze on this one. We're still gonna make a Malamine box, but this one's gonna be a little bit of an inverted version of the last one. We're going to raise up the center of the box, then we're going to trim it out again with the PVC trim. This is going to give us this great raised edge along the perimeter, but also it's gonna create kind of this shadow box in the center. Now, as far as the address numbers are concerned, we're going to use this self-adhesive backed craft foam, but we'll, we'll get more into this in a minute. But I'd like to start off with uh, making our mail me box. I got all the parts cut for both my different molds. And by the way, I will have a link down in the description below for the plans and dimensions for both of these molds, but understand you will have to tweak your dimensions based on however many digits you have in your address. Usually you see me put these melamine boxes together with an uh, inch and a quarter screws, but today I'm just gonna go with an uh, inch and a quarter brad nails. Just pop them in there real quick. Now after I cut the basic boxes, then I moved on to the moldings, the trim pieces. Now a pro tip, or maybe a helpful tip, when I'm cutting any kind of crown molding type situation, instead of having to hassle with any kind of compound angles, I, what I actually do is I will butt my molding up against the fence of my miter saw until it's nice and square, and then I will mark off that front lip of the crown molding. And you've seen this trick a million times before. I lay down some painter's tape, throw some CA glue, and a little bit of accelerator on the other side. Then I just throw it down, and now I've got myself a nice little crown molding jig. This will keep the molding nice and square up against the fence, and all I have to worry about is cutting a 45 degree on the ends. This gives me a perfect miter joint every time. Turning our attention to the simple mold, I'm gonna go ahead and place the decorative molding or the crown molding around the perimeter of the inside of the box. Then just gonna tack it in place with uh, some three quarter breads. Now turning our attention over to the more intricate mold, uh, not too much going on here. We're just gonna we're gonna add this rectangle to the center to give it that uh, inverted design, and then I'm just gonna tack it in place with an inch and a quarter brad nails. Now when I add my decorative molding, I'm going to add it to the outside perimeter of the inner rectangle as opposed to what we did last time where we did it to the perimeter of the box itself. Th does that make sense? And again, I'm tacking these in place with three quarter brads. And there's our intricate mold. But do you see how it's gonna give us that more inverted design? Now that we got both of our boxes or our forms mostly constructed and trimmed out, now all we have left to do here 
is seal all the seams with 100% silicone. By the way, try to uh, cut the tip real small on this one. I don't know how necessary this is, but while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and dab some silicone over all of the, the brad nail holes as well. For this next step, I'm going to use a material called craft foam, specifically the one with the adhesive back to make things a lot easier on myself. As far as cutting the characters out or the numbers out, I personally, to, again, to make things easier on myself, I own a Cricut cutter and I use it for all sorts of different things, but, but obviously, you do not have to own a Cricut cutter in order to do this. Just simply print your characters out on a sheet of paper to the size you want, spray both the backs of the paper and the craft foam, and just stick it to the back. Now you can just easily cut the numbers out with an X-Acto knife. I know it sounds tedious, but it's a lot cheaper than going out to buy a Cricut cutter or a machine to do this step. Just remember this, the foam side has got to be a mirror image. It has to be in reverse. So when you spray adhesive your numbers to the back the right way, after you cut them out and turn them over, it will already be in mirror image for you. So again, this is the back, this is the sticky side. Once I turn it around, now my letters are mirror image. Because if you don't remember this simple step, if you pour your concrete, demold it, man, you are gonna be sorry. I, I'm not saying that this has happened to me three, actually four times. Just don't let it happen to you. Now we just simply apply our numbers. Now this is the most satisfying part. I'll do it nice and slow. Huh? Doesn't that look great? Let's, let's do it again. All right, this one is gonna be a little bit more difficult to deal with because it's a, a much bigger sheet to deal with. There, I think that's got it. We're almost ready to pour. We still got one more thing to do before we even think about pouring. Now our next step is to cut our metal reinforcement. This is called metal lath. You can usually find this in like say your drywall section. And you just, you cut it with some snips. No big deal. And once we get those cut to size, then we wanna work on a method to hang these guys. I'm sure there's many different ways to hang a concrete project on the wall, but this is how we're gonna do it. We're, gonna, we're just gonna try to keep it simple. So I've got something called hardware wire. And you're just gonna cut about three inches. Then you're going to bend it, crease it in the middle, make a U shape. Then on the ends, I'm going to bend the ends at a 90 degree angle, like this. Then I'm gonna bend them another 45 degrees. Now you're gonna have a shape that looks like this. And you're gonna have these nice little hooks on the end to actually hook onto the metal lab. Like this. But now that we have everything all cut and set and ready to go, now we can get to pouring these guys. Well, I'm sure it comes as to no surprise to you that have been watching the channel that I'm going to be using Rapid Sets Mortar Mix in tandem with the flow control to give us a more flowable consistency. And yes, 
Yes, I understand that concrete is not mortar mix. Mortar mix is not concrete. Yes, I get, I know the difference, but it is still aggregate, sand, and cement. Close enough. And this is not sponsored by RapidSet, by the way. You can use any concrete you want. Um, I just, I love this stuff because there's, there's nothing else that does what this does and I can demold this stuff in one hour as opposed to one week. So let's, let's get on to prepping our molds and get ready to pour. Make sure to spray your molds down with some sort of mold release. I like to use WD-40. I've been forgetting this a lot lately. One last check to make sure that I've got everything before I pour. Water, trowel, bucket scraper, mortar mix, flow control, drill. I, I, we're, we're good to go. I like to pour my water in first. And honestly, for something like this, probably only need a quarter of a bag at that. Don't forget to put your drill on low speed, otherwise you're gonna burn it out. Also, don't forget to do the Captain Morgan. Very important. Now that we got our peanut butter consistency, like a, a normal consistency, now we're going to add the flow control. Since we only got a quarter to a half a bag right here. I'm only going to use a half a packet. That's all we really need. Then mix again. This is a really cool part. Now we've got a nice pourable consistency and we haven't lost any strength. Now let's pour. Bucket scraper, saves me every time. Honestly, I probably could have added some more flow control. And it is very hot in the shed today, so that makes a difference. I'm just give it some taps and everything is going to settle into place. And this will also work all the bubbles to the surface. Do a quick little screening. Now, let's quickly add our metal reinforcement. Usually I pour half and then place these and then pour on top. But since these are so thin, I'm just gonna work it into the material. And don't work it too far down either. And we gotta, we wanna make sure that our little hangers are sticking straight up in the air. Again, had I used more flow control, this would be, this would be a lot easier. Now I'm just doing a little trowel work, finishing it up a little bit. Nobody's gonna see this side, so we're not looking for it to be pretty, but we are looking for it to be nice and flat. All right, now since we used the Rapid Set mortar mix, all I've got to do is wait one hour and we can go ahead and demold these things. Also, something that I forgot to mention, remember, this stuff sets up fast. So again, already it's, it's only been 20 minutes and it's already throwing off heat. So that's when you want to make sure you start water curing it. Okay, water cure it for one hour. So to avoid surface cracks, make sure to water cure. Before we go any further, just wanted to take a second to thank my awesome patrons. All right, let's 
been an hour, so let's go ahead and demold these guys. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite scared of what's going to come out of these molds because uh, that mix was nowhere near as soupy as I needed it to be. And all because, all because I simply didn't put enough flow control in there. So I'm very upset about that. So we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> slipped out real nicely I can't look I can't you guys tell me is it bad or is it good is it awful Ooh, that actually didn't turn out too bad I mean, there's there's a lot of bubbles I'm gonna be on it but I've only got one real bad void right here it looks like that's not too bad all right let's so let's put this one aside for now and let's let's do this one. This this one I'm this one I'm most excited about. I'm very excited to see how this one turned out. I'm, I want it to be very picture frame. This one's being a little stubborn. Oh pop. Again. Can't look. Oh, our, um, okay, the center of our mold has stayed with the piece and now that I'm seeing, I'm, so has the molding. So that's, that's delightful. That's delightful. Oh, there we go. So far, so good. Ooh, ooh, I think I got one started. All right. There we go. There we go. Ah! Just busted the bottom out. Ugh. Well, well that sucked. Let's let's take the numbers out because this is this is the funnest part. Well, besides really screwing everything up by taking out all the trim pieces uh, and making this big gouge, turned out the way I wanted it to, minus the bubbles. Now we're going to clean these up a little bit and put some paint on the numbers to make them really pop, but uh, this is how the pour should have went. what it's supposed to look like. That's how it's supposed to go. And the mold is still intact. Th this time when I rebuilt the mold, I glued everything down with rapid set construction adhesive. Stuff is badass. Look at, look at how nice and clean the edges are. Very minimal bubbles. Ugh, I'm so happy with the way these turned out. Well, we've got two different versions of the same thing, only this one, this simple one is more like your 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 typical standard plaque where this one's got more of more of like a picture frame type of design. But you know, get funky, get creative with these things. There are so many different profiles down the molding aisle. Choose which one. Do do something unique. Make something cool. But now it's time to pick one of these bad boys and go hang it up. And there it is, a custom concrete address plaque that will last generations. And you made it yourself. Thank you for watching this video, and while you're at it, 
watch these other two videos. The algorithm says you're gonna love them.